my bottom in a hospital queue. <laughs>
Anybody's? Mm. Oh. Not too long now, don't you worry. Fifty-two. No. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> What is the problem? The problem is that they make it 
Don't you be careful. I couldn't help it. When the truck. Now watch what you're doing. Do any harm with that. Oh, 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 oh. I don't want to break your neck. I just don't say you all my life. Hey, you guys. Would you gentlemen be so kind as to make a little room for me and my friend? Why, there's your table over there. Thank you. I just got word the governor was coming out to inspect the camp.
I ought to make you eat that. Why don't you be careful? I beg your pardon. Get away from my table! Get out of here, Bolton! You are! we have to do to get something to eat? Get me some wood and I'll fix you up. How much do you want? Well, listen, the more wood you get, the more you get to eat. Thank you. Come, Stanny. Well, here we are. No, 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 no. The more wood, the more food. Oh, the train. Correct. Now, come on. Why don't you do something to help me? Be caught in your pocket. Give me that axe and I'll stand back. from here. What's your name? Darcy Oak. Darcy, where are you from? I'm from Canada. Are you living in the UK or you I'm not, no, I came here just for this, so. How old are you, Darcy? I'm 26. And what got you into the act that you're doing today? When I was a kid, actually, I had hopes and dreams of becoming a doctor, but my parents insisted that I become a magician. So, <laughs> here I am. All right, wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much.
last time I was here, I did something like this. That's what got me here. But tonight, I want to try something different. No fancy costumes. No dancing girls. No big boxes. Just pure illusion. Keep in mind, this is a live camera feed. It will shoot the illusion 360 degrees so you can watch literally from all angles. Everyone at home, your shot will not cut away. They say that time is of the essence. That's especially true tonight. This is not a trick. The concept is very simple. A regulation straitjacket. Five buckles down the back, one across the arms. Hanging above the stage is a human bear trap. 16 serrated blades, all held open by a single rope. In a moment, I'll be suspended by my ankles and raised 20 feet into the air. The rope, which holds the trap open, will be set on fire. The rope burns through in approximately 53 seconds, leaving me 52 seconds to make my escape before the trap comes slamming shut. Tonight could end catastrophically. Let's begin. What would you think about if you had 60 seconds left to live? It's been said your entire life flashes before your eyes. The most important moments go by in an instant. The people you love, the people you lost, the people who made a difference. Tonight, I'll see it for myself. As a kid, I saw a magician perform a routine where he got locked inside of a box and in front of everyone, he picked the locks to the box and escaped. Now, it wasn't the most exciting thing, but as a kid, I was absolutely fascinated. My dad saw exactly how fascinated I was and without me knowing, he built me a box to escape from. There it is right there. 
So tonight, as an homage to my dad, I'd like to perform for you a version that he built for me. However, I've never done it this way before, and I'll never do it this way again. The concept is very simple. In a moment, I'll be locked inside of that box, my hands handcuffed on the outside. The box will be raised 20 feet into the air. There are four fuses connected to the bottom of the box. They'll be set on fire. The fire takes approximately 56 seconds to travel up the fuse and reach the box. When it does, the box is set to explode. My job is to free myself from the handcuffs, open up the box, and grab the safety rope hanging beside it. We also have a camera, so you can keep track of my progress inside the box the entire time. At this point, I'd like to invite Ant and Deck out on stage to examine everything we are about to use. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good to see you. I have a pair of handcuffs. These are police regulation handcuffs. I want you to make sure there's no little button that opens them up. They're not trick cuffs in any way, shape, or form. I have the key. If you could please hold on to that. Make sure only the key opens the lock as well. You just put it in the hole, turn it around. Yep, and they yep. open. That's it. That's good. Your job is to hold on to the key. If you could join me over here, yep. one of you could stand here and the other on that side over there. I'll take the cuffs. Thank okay. you. We will go ahead and lock my right yep. hand in. Thank you very much. And if you can do my left hand, please. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And if you can also hand me the pick. Right there, it's attached to that chain. Yep. Yep, right there. Now you'll notice there is one more lock on top. The lid will be closed and that will be locked. Just verify it is in fact secure. And when it's locked, please exit stage as quickly as you can for your own safety. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's begin. My God.
back in time and relive a single moment of your life, what would that moment be? I grew up with an older brother until I was 23 years old. He was my hero. He was charming, charismatic, the life of the party. He was everything I wanted to be like. He's everything I still want to be like. He was everything an older brother should be. His name was Bruce. <laughs> you guys would have loved him. You could classify our sense of humor as immature. We used to do this thing where we'd be walking around town, he'd reach down, he'd grab my hand, and we'd literally walk around town holding hands. We did this well into our 20s. We told each other it was just a joke, but I know deep down to both of us it meant so much more than that. They say a picture's worth a thousand words. If that's the case, then this one is worth a million to me. On March 28, 2011, at 7 a.m., I got a phone call from my mom, and it's one that replays in my head daily. She didn't have to say a word. I picked up the phone, and I already knew. Bruce was gone. Losing someone you love is like living with a brick in your pocket. The weight never goes away. You just get used to carrying it around. In the eight years since he's passed, I've learned that it's not whether the glass is half full or half empty. It's being thankful that there's even water in it at all. If I could turn back time and go back to when we were kids, If I could relive one moment, it would be that one. Thank you.